Hey, this is Cam with Blackdale Studio, and this week I decided to make my shop just a little bit bigger by building an attached shed to house my desk collector and air compressor. Stay tuned. First off, big thanks to Home Depot and Husky Tools for sponsoring this week's video. You will see plenty of both of them in this video, but here is what we're looking at. This is the empty space alongside my new shop, and in my last shop, some of you might remember, I had a small attached shed that had an air compressor in it, and that was from the previous owner. I thought it was brilliant because it was so quiet, freed up all that space. I ended up putting my own dust collector out there as well, and the new shop didn't have anything like that, and it's a pretty big shop, so it didn't really need it, but I decided to make this addition and add a little attached shed for my dust collector and air compressor. In addition to seeing a lot of Home Depot and a lot of Husky tools, you are going to see a lot of my dad in this video, and he doesn't make a lot of appearances in my videos, but I really don't know that much about general construction, and my dad's not a contractor, he's just a dad that's been around a long time and built a lot of stuff, so he entirely spearheaded this project, and I literally would not have been able to do it without him, so big thanks to him for that, and this is one of the things that he came up with, and I guess it's not his trick, but he said that you can save a lot of money on concrete by filling it up with random concrete chunks and pieces like that. And I had all kinds of random concrete blocks on my property and we even went down to an abandoned lot that's just kind of an eyesore in our neighborhood, picked up all these concrete chunks because we could save, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars on concrete by filling it up with these chunks here. This is another good tip if you are building a similar foundation like this. And what we're doing here is just took a rotor hammer and we're drilling into the side of the existing foundation. And then we are gonna take just regular old rebar, pound it in with a hammer. We did about four or five of these and we put them at different angles. And I don't know if the angles made a huge difference, but this is gonna prevent the new concrete slab from ever sagging or sliding away from the existing foundation. And so I thought that was pretty clever too, because I've seen those foundations that have kind of slid away from the original foundation and they look horrible. And this is gonna prevent that. Also just using the water to kind of compact everything down, checking our level. We were looking for about three or four inches at the thinnest. So all the compacted gravel and concrete chunks we used, we're gonna fill up the rest of that. Even though we were going for just a three or four inch thick slab, we made kind of a bull nose effect by letting that gravel kind of slope off towards the edge of the form. So on the back side, it's gonna look like the slab is like 18 inches thick and the front side there about eight inches thick. Although the center part is only gonna be around that three or four inches. And here is another tip from dad and that's just using diesel fuel in a pump sprayer. And this is gonna make the boards easier to remove. My old neighbor is an engineer with a lot of experience with concrete, and he told me not to worry about rebar for a slab this size, but that I absolutely had to put the wire mesh in. And my dad told me the best way to do the wire mesh is you set it in first and then start your concrete pour and then just pull that wire mesh up an inch or two. Another top tip for you guys is if you need a small concrete slab poured or really a big slab or anything, check out a mini mix or on-site concrete company because they come to your house with a concrete truck and I wasn't expecting such a big one and neither was my dad, but they will only mix up exactly what you need. And he's just mixing it literally in the truck there. And so you only have to pay for what you use. And it sounds like an insurance commercial, but it's pretty great because I didn't need a ton and I was only gonna use like a yard and a half and it ended up being like 1.6 yards. And he just charged for exactly the amount that we used, which I think in the end ended up being about 330 bucks. So not too bad and way better than mixing up. I think it was gonna be about, I don't know, 60 or 80 bags if we were gonna to try to do, the, do it that way, which was never a viable option. If you watch my videos in the past, you know that I don't really try to hide much even when I screw something up. And this is something that really got my blood pumping. If you've had an epoxy blowout or an epoxy leak, you should see a concrete leak because it is exciting. And my dad actually really wasn't too worried about it. I was quite worried about it, but it didn't really push the form out. It started to push it up. All that concrete started to seep underneath, which pushed it up. And it didn't hurt us except that it made it so we couldn't screed it on top of the boards. And that's why you can see here we had to use a level to kind of screed it that way. And in the end, it didn't make any difference and the form was just fine, but you can see that lip there. And that was the problem with that concrete pushing it up. And again, thanks to having my dad there because I would not have come up with a solution for it on the fly. But I guess when you've been around for a little while, you come up with solutions for problems that come up like this. I am a guy that likes to have every single tool, but one thing I've learned is when you have a tool you don't use very often, especially a big tool, it's a burden to store. And I'm kind of running out of space for tools. So we went to the local Home Depot rental center and I think all of these tools combined to rent for 24 hours was like 
$25, and that was definitely worth it just for nothing else that I don't have to store huge concrete tools for the rest of my life. Here we installed some J-bolts in the semi-wet concrete, and if you're wondering what is a J-bolt, where can I get a J-bolt, I'm going to have links to everything in the video in the video description below, and as always, those are affiliate links, which just means I get a little bit of money anytime you click that link and purchase something, and I'm pretty sure I get paid even if you buy something else, not just the item that you clicked on, not positive on that, but just to be safe, anytime you buy something, you should definitely click through one of my links. This part here made me pretty nervous because my dad wanted to fix a spot out in the very middle of it. And I was like, you're going to go sit on the wet concrete because it only been, I don't know, a couple hours. He's like, oh, yeah, they do it all the time. And I was pretty skeptical, but it generally knows what he's doing. And sure enough, did not sink in. So another kind of a cool thing that I learned. But here is what the form looked like. And besides that one little blowout, it looks like a concrete pad. And I waited about 48 hours. My dad said you can do it in 24 hours, but he was actually coming up that weekend for dinner and he wanted to be a part of taking it apart. And so uh, here's what we got. And I think it looks pretty freaking good for a couple of guys that don't really know what they're doing. When it comes to what you get for the money, there are two things that Husky Tools does better than anybody. And I think a lot of you will agree with this. And one of those is tool boxes. The other is tool bags. I have a bunch of these Husky bags. I have two of their big rolling workbenches. They just sent me this backpack here, which was really handy. Kept my hammer, all my small nails in there. I guess I shouldn't say small nails. These were like three inch ring shanks, galvanized, good for this framing nailer. This is an old Hitachi framing nailer that a friend of mine gave me. It's great because I never use it and I finally get a chance to. Also, Husky is also great for ratchet straps, and I strategically placed these here for the video, but as I was staging this, I looked up in the corner, and there is one that's been sitting in my truck for the last two years that I use all the time. So if you do not keep ratchet straps in the back of your truck, you are doing it wrong. Once again, Pops was the foreman on the framing part, not just the concrete, because again, he knows a lot more about this than I do. And one of the very first things that he said when we were starting to make these walls is you do not want to make your walls exactly eight feet because the sheets of siding come in eight feet. And that would seem like it'd be a perfect fit, but it's not because you need that siding to overlap onto the concrete foundation, just like an inch. So all the rain runs down the side of your house or the side of your shed, not potentially into your shop. So you need to make your walls just short of eight feet. So we made them, I don't know, like an inch and a half short of eight feet. And that was going to save us a big headache in the uh, siding part. I have really enjoyed this process of trying to create my dream wood shop. And even though I have a long ways to go, I'm finally starting to see some progress, starting to see something for all my hard work. So that part has been really fun for me. And even though it's fun for me, I need to know, is it fun for you guys? Because you guys are essentially my clients these days. So if you don't like what you're watching, you're not going to be my customer, which means I don't get any views, which means I don't get any more Home Depot sponsorships. So let me know in the comments if you like these shop updates, if you want more shop updates, you want less shop updates. And if you do like what you see, if you want to see more of it, all I ask from you is if you hit that little subscribe button. And if you hit the little bell notification subscribe button, you will be notified anytime a new video comes out. I made one big bulk purchase at Home Depot where I bought all my lumber, a bunch of nails, I bought the exterior door, but one thing I didn't think about until my dad showed up and goes, oh, you got an outswing door, right? And I go, no, doors always go inside. And he goes, yeah, but shop doors should go to the outside because you don't want to hit all of your equipment inside. And I was like, oh yeah, that should be the case. So we framed the door out for a door we didn't end up using and the new door we got was a little bit smaller. And you'll see that here in a little bit, but just know, Dad did the right thing and we'd framed it out properly. I just didn't buy the right door. Pops was pretty crafty and he matched the pitch of this roof to the pitch of the main shop roof, which makes it look like it was designed together. So I thought that was pretty slick. And apparently all of those little numbers on a framing square actually do something. And that's how you get those perfect vertical lines there. I felt pretty lucky that we went to the local Home Depot and we were able to match the siding exactly to the siding on the shop to the shed. And it was kind of a strand board. It's not a cement board. It's like an OSB based siding and it matched the shop absolutely perfect. So I thought that was pretty slick that we didn't have to go to do any custom ordering or anything like that. And speaking of lucky, we had a washer and dryer delivered and I see these two big delivery guys and they had their straps and I was like, hey, 
you guys want to help me move an air compressor and a dust collector? And they're like, absolutely. So I gave them each 20 bucks and I thought that was pretty good because it only took about three minutes to do this. But I do not know how I was going to muscle up that dust collector. Pretty sure me and my dad weren't going to get it by ourselves. So thanks so much to the delivery team that helped us out with this. Here we are just putting some Z flashing up between the sheets of siding and any proper flashing is just going to basically make water penetration impossible. It's going to make sure the water runs down the side of the house instead of into it. And after all this time of my dad showing me everything and me knowing nothing, I finally got to show him something that he hadn't seen before. And that was my track saw. And I don't think he was super impressed by it because you could just do the same thing with a two by four, but I was pretty impressed with myself. Something that I haven't even brought up to my dad is while he was helping me here on this project, he was paying a contractor to put new trim around all the windows on his entire house. So I thought it was a little ironic and kind of funny that I was not paying anybody to do anything here and getting all this free work from my dad while he was paying someone to work on his house. So I guess that's what it's like being retired and I just had to take advantage of it while I could. But he did leave me high and dry to go fishing on this day, so I was left to try to hang a door myself. And you'll see what happens when someone without the actual construction experience hangs the door. And it ended up fine in the end, but it was a little bit sporty, I guess I'll say, trying to get this uh, trimmed out just right and make it look like it was supposed to be that way. I'd probably spend another day or so getting all the trim on and everything caulked, and then we were finally ready for paint. My wife wanted to paint the basement, and I said, oh, perfect, we can paint the shed right afterwards. And she didn't really know that she was going to be on the hook for that, but it was nice because she went very OCD on the door, and the door actually looks immaculate now, so that was great. Anyway, all of that pre-prime siding, the paint went on super easy. was very, very happy with that. I had been using the shed for a few weeks before I finally got around to building this step and I decided to use the same trick my dad showed me of anchoring the step to the main foundation and I didn't have any rebar but I did have these concrete anchors so they were going to be a lot more expensive versions of putting the rebar in and I found a hammer helps get those started and I just threaded them in there about two inches or so and I feel like anytime you see a concrete step that's on gravel it's always pulled out away from the house and it looks horrible so I wanted to make sure that my step didn't slide away and this was not a super scientific form that I built but I figured if it was square and level I couldn't really go wrong. I decided that I probably didn't need a full mini mix truck to come up to pour my steps. So I got a couple of 80 pound sacks of concrete from Home Depot, mixed them up with the garden hose and wasn't really too bad. Took a couple of minutes and I did one big mistake. And it's the same mistake that you do when you are building an epoxy table. You do your calculations and you go, no, I don't think those calculations are right. I'm sure I have enough. And you'll see at the end, I actually ran out of concrete. Uh, about seven eighths the way done so i had to make a quick trip to home depot before the concrete set up and grab a couple more sacks before everything set up and in the end hopefully it's fine i still actually haven't taken the form apart but i'm willing to bet everything is okay one of the things i've been meaning to do over the last year or more is step up my audio visual game and i actually have a really nice dslr that can shoot really good video i've just been afraid to make that transition because i don't really know how to use it and i really don't know how to edit and i also just bought this Atomus ninja 5 which is a really fancy video recorder that works with my dslr I also just don't know how to use that. So I need to get into that game right now. I'm doing everything on my iPhone. So if you guys have any good resources, I'm pretty much self-taught at woodworking. And so I would like to be self-taught at video editing too. So if you guys want to leave me a comment with some good YouTubers that are good with Premiere Pro or shooting with DSLRs or those Ninja 5s, I would love to hear some suggestions from you guys. It was not a coincidence that I chose that segment to talk about another topic because I do not want you guys copying my concrete work. I'll tell you when I'm good at something, but I am not good at concrete. I can get the job done and this will hold up my body weight and anything more than that, I just don't know. We got a wind alert in the middle of this, started blowing stuff all over it. And in the end, I was totally happy with the step. Here is the finished shop though. I was very happy with how the trim looked. I was happy with how all the paint looked. Everything really looks like it was essentially designed as a part of the original shop. I didn't show before, but we have kind of a ledger board up there with flashing and caulk that's gonna prevent any rain from getting in. The real benefit of this shed though is it gets to hide all my junk from the street so nobody can see how trashy I look. So I was pretty happy that I finally got to hide all that stuff back there. Already been dinging up the door. Didn't realize that I needed to paint inside that seam there so I'll touch that up eventually. But here is what we're looking at.
everything is wired and insulated and there's actually a very good reason that this shed is insulated because i am actually going to be equalizing the pressure to the main shop and right now it's just those big hacked out slits that you see there but i have all my ducting done there's going to be a full ducting video i have lots more shop videos to come this is my ivac control all of my automatic blast gates all of my insulation stuffed up there. Just ran some of that heavy duty foam board for the ceiling insulation. I have my air compressor in here. There's just one hose hooked up so far. I'll be running airlines throughout my whole shop. But all in all, I got a pretty functional shed. Door even closes easily. All right, this week, start your question or comment with whatever name you use for your dad, whether it's pops, dad, father, don't use daddy, that could just get a little bit weird, but whatever you call your dad, start your question or comment with that word and I will know you made it all the way to the end of the video and I promise I will answer all of your questions and comments first. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please, please subscribe for more videos. Have a great week.